Good morning from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. We have the pleasure of having another UHA's Neurosurgery Grand Rounds. And by the way, I forgot to say, Jiha Hao, Huan Ying. Welcome to our Chinese Neurosurgery brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, Dr. Bin is translating this into Chinese simultaneously, and we welcome the, uh, the uh, Chinese neurosurgery community. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll begin with Yuha. Uh, he's going to give his presentation. The theme is middle cerebral artery aneurysm. Okay, Yuha, it's all yours. Thank you, John. Hello, everybody. Ni hao. So I will speak about the surgery of middle cerebral artery aneurysms. I've been working in Finland. I'm former chairman and uh, emeritus professor in Helsinki and now since two years I'm working here in Chengzhou in China at Henan Provincial People's Hospital. So we speak about middle cerebral artery aneurysms and uh, this is the background for this presentation. So I have been working in Finland in two places in Kuopio, Eastern Finland and then 18 years as a chairman in Helsinki. So in both, we built a good database of the aneurysm patients. So we have very exact knowledge of 17,000 patients with 22,000 aneurysms. And out of these, more than 7,000 are middle cerebral artery aneurysms. Exact data on the databases. In the upper part, you can see that the aneurysm surgery was done early in Finland. Some cases were done already in the end of uh, 1930s, but main part then the operations began uh, heavily in 1950s and then continued more and more. And since 1970, there are in Helsinki 12,000 patients and in Kuopio more than 4,000 patients. So this is the grandfather of Finnish neurosurgery. This is Herbert Oliver Krona. He was Swedish pioneering neurosurgeon. He trained Herbert nearly Oliver all Kruna. European he Swedish pioneering neurosurgeon. He trained nearly all Kruna. European Now is something wrong. Now something wrong. I Okay, I continue. So this is Herbert Oliver Kruna, and uh, he was a European pioneer teacher in neurosurgery, and he operated. He was his a European pioneer teacher in neurosurgery, and he operated. He was a European pioneer. Something wrong now. The sound. My talking is. Uh, Going no, around. Yeah, I'm sorry, Hugo, I fixed it. Can I continue now? Yes, Can sorry about me? that. Yes, sorry about that. Okay, okay. So Oliver Kroon operated his first aneurysm already in 1932, resected a, a giant vertebra aneurysm, and uh, 1954, he clipped a uh, basilar bifurcation aneurysm as also his student, last, last uh, trained neurosurgeon, Einar Boom, whom I met when working in Uppsala. So they both like I did basilar bifurcation aneurysm 1954. And this is very special, special thing to do that without microscope successfully. And these are the grandfathers of Finnish neurosurgery, Arno Snellman, the first neurosurgeon began, was training some time with Oliver Kruna and then came back to Finland and uh, began to operate on. And his successor, great aneurysm surgeon of Björkesten, who died the second year when I was a resident in Finland, Helsinki. 
it's all from the old times without microscope. That was the saying in Helsinki that you have a professor competence if you can occlude the middle cerebral artery without any deficits in the patient. This is of course seldom possible. And it looked like that. This is from the year 1953. You see very large aneurysm ligated with silk and then Oliver Krona clip added to the base of the aneurysm. And it looked in the operation room like that. This is not from aneurysm operation. This uh, is certainly a trigeminal operation with pillar frasier method. Patient is sitting here. So this is from our databases, site of the aneurysms. And as mentioned, the middle cerebral artery aneurysms are the most common, more than one third of all the aneurysms, 35%. And uh, in several studies, we may studied these middle cerebral artery aneurysms heavily in 1995. Dr. Jakko Rinne, professor now in Turku, made his PhD on multiple aneurysms, including middle cerebral artery aneurysms. Then uh, Dr. Reza Dasti, coming from Istanbul, uh, published all different sites, proximal M1 aneurysms, bifurcation aneurysms, and distal MC aneurysm, aneurysms, very good papers. And then Egyptian fellow Ahmed El Sarkavu made also his PhD of these aneurysms. And this is from the his, uh, PhD occasion. You see Ugur Dure is the opponent. I'm Kustos and in the middle is Ahmed El Sarkavu from uh, Egypt. So he divided the middle cerebral artery aneurysms in four different sites. So you can see here the, the M1 aneurysms and then uh, these are the M1 aneurysms, and then bifurcation aneurysms and distal aneurysms. You can see here five, five different sites, but his classification was four. And in the picture, you see that the artery is not coming from the base of the aneurysm, but in the picture here, for this special for the M1 aneurysms, that the artery here, anterior temporal, the uh, artery is coming from the base of the aneurysms. This is very important for the, the treatment. So the middle cerebral artery aneurysms are the most common in Finnish population. They have many times multiple aneurysms. They have many times intracerebral hematomas and because of that, there is high management, morbidity and mortality, and the series uh, uh, describing these common aneurysms are rather seldom in literature. They have complex cisterna and vascular anatomy. They supply important areas of cortex and eloquent areas, and there is lack of collateral circulation mainly. This is very important to note. And one more thing, middle cerebral artery aneurysms are superficial, close to the surface. So to speak about surgery, surgical strategy, there are four different types. You can operate on unruptured aneurysms electively. Then you have acute surgery, in ruptured aneurysms, we used to operate all cases within one or two days after rupture in the small country like Finland, it is possible. And then you have emergencies, patients with large intracerebral hematomas, and then you have very special cases, difficult to treat large, giant, fusiform aneurysms. When planning the surgery, you have to look at the patient. How is the patient? What kind of uh, grade the patient has? 
if the patient has hematoma, and then of course the size of the aneurysms, which type of aneurysm, main part are saccular aneurysms, ruptured, unruptured. I always look at the length of M1 because then you know where the aneurysm is. And in large aneurysm, aneurysms, you have to look at calcifications and how the parent vessels are coming close to the aneurysm. About position when doing surgery, head should be elevated clearly above the cardiac level, then you have less bleedings, rotate it only slightly. The most common error is to rotate too much, then the temporal leap in the sylvian fissure is overcrowding. The anorosocyta is more difficult to open the sylvian fissure. I tailor always the head position, thinking how the aneurysm is directed and you cannot say exactly how the head position is. You will see in the coming videos. You should have a good working angle with the mobile microscope, with mouth switch. You can always reach that very well. Oh, this is the craniotomy I have been using since 80s, this lateral supraorbital approach. We don't shave the head, please note that. I will come back to that. Minimal saving only for the, the operative area. Prepare well, Fil infiltrate with uh, lidocaine, or adrenaline or other derivatives, the wound to have less bleedings. And then I'm making single layer flap. My knife is going through all the layers to the skull and retract it as a single package. This means that there is no or minimal temporal muscle atrophy later when the patient has recovered and there are no frontal facial uh, branch injury. And when dissecting toward the aneurysm, I usually open the sylvian fissure with a needle attached to tuberculin syringe, use water dissection to distend the sylvian fissure, and then open very focused around one inch the sylvian fissure and use sharp dissection usually towards the aneurysm. There are four different types of uh, four different types of aneurysm directions, like uh, Reza Dusty published after analyzing these cases. This aneurysm is directed to the sylvian fissure, and you have to know uh, which direction the aneurysm is pointing. This means a lot in surgical uh, in surgery. Then in the fresh cases, as I mentioned, we operated in the first two days because the patients were quickly transferred to us. So you have the red, angry, swollen brain after subarachnoid hemorrhage. You have to change it to slack brain. And I usually use lamina terminalis opening. Then we had excellent anesthetist in Helsinki they had the tricks and usually the main uh, note by the visitors was how the brain can be so slack, even there was a heavy subarachnoid bleeding and hematoma. I seldom used ventriculostomy, but I left ventricular catheters through lamina terminalis in the third ventricle. There are many patients had uh, mirror aneurysms like here. Many of them you can do by one-sided flap, also clipping contralateral prions. In this case, could be done from left-sided flap. So we go to the videos now. First case is very small middle cerebral artery aneurysm. 
video edited by Daniel Kosuro, now working in Israel. She's 51 years old female. It's difficult to see in the CT angiodianorism, but it is medially pointing the M1 aneurysm. And from experience, we know that the CT angio is not uh, showing all the side of the aneurysm. Here I go to right, Spadara Supra the approach now with the needle opening, the Sylvian Fisher. This is very cheap, good knife, the needle. Magnification is very high. And then I go directly through this small focused opening to MCA and towards the aneurysm. The aneurysm was pointing upwards, so we have to find it on the superior surface of the MCA. We don't see it yet, but soon minimal resection of the frontal lip and then we come to the aneurysm you see that there's a small patty i don't use use i didn't use tweeds in these patties here in china i'm not allowed to do that now we see the aneurysm and you see it was extremely small aneurysm in the angios, CD angios, but it has also extremely thin wall. That there is a small, thin walled area, and it is easy to understand that this aneurysms rupture. So half of the aneurysm ruptured aneurysms were less than seven millimeter in our series. Now I took a curved clip because you have to save behind the sac is the anterior tempora uh, one big perforator and uh, this is very crucial to save it otherwise the patient will have severe deficits and this is uh, was i see angio and now i coagulate down the aneurysm add some hemostat there tacosil and back Sylvian Fisher, and like a teeth, I closed the door after clipping of the aneurysm. And these are the post-operative controls. You see, it was rather proximal aneurysm. And this was the team doing the video. And we go to the next one. So this is ruptured left middle cerebral artery aneurysm video edited by Chen Lau in Hong Kong. So this is CT, left sided, left side more blood, and again very small aneurysm. We used only CT angio to diagnose the aneurysms because when we saw in the patient was brought by ambulance to us, we made CT, that was a subarachnoid bleeding, we immediately made CT angio and then the patient was with good pictures ready to operation. So many of the cases were operated even on the day of the rupture. And here, tight brain, I went to lamina terminalis open the lamina terminalis and here is very important slowly suck the csf out and then when you have slack brain then you can go to the aneurysm but you should not begin to dissect the aneurysm if the brain is not slack because you are if you put your spatulas or the frontal and temporal lobe you will have have uh, contusions, brain damage in both lobes, like it was shown by Dr. Riku Kivisari in his PhD work. So now dissecting it looks totally different. There's a lot of blood, fresh blood after fresh subarachnoid hemorrhage. One of the advantages of the <coughs> 
fast surgeries that there is less scarring so you can suck all the blood out when you operate late like we used in 70s so you had more scarring with waiting now dissecting the mca putting golden color temporary clip on the middle cerebral artery and now we are going towards the aneurysm you will see the here is the aneurysm and there is a ct angio picture and you will see also under the sucker is the rupture point from both and this is the first clip pilot clip taking the base of the aneurysm then i remove the temporary clip you should, should not take temporary clip immediately out just open it because if it bleeds so it might be difficult to put it back and now i coagulate the aneurysm smaller change the clip suck the with sucker the aneurysm inside the clip and change many times i have temporary clip in the place so there is no danger of the heavy bleeding <coughs> and coagulate down the aneurysm and this is icg was not i was not happy with the clipping you should continue as long as you are satisfied but you should not try too hard because then you might occlude the bifurcation so then again closing the ciliary fissure and this is post-operative ct done usually next day next And here is unruptured right middle cerebral artery aneurysm. This was a growing aneurysm. The patient is the sister of Guido Guglielmi, the pioneer of the endovascular surgery, coiling of the aneurysms. He was visiting Helsinki. We had a very good time together and uh, he sent her sister for surgery. This is the lateral supra of the approach, right side. And now again, under high magnification, opening with needle, sylvian fissure, injecting water inside the sylvian fissure, expanding the sylvian fissure. These are Kamiyama schizos, very good micro schizos. Very expensive also. When they fall down, then they are dis destroyed. And so in this way, you lose them easily. So going, through this style opening the, of the sylvian fissure, we go to the aneurysm. It looks as very thick wall, but soon we will see which pleb was growing. So it is here below the cotton. There is a very thin walled part. We don't see it yet. And dissecting and the high magnification. Oh, what happened? I made something stupid. That I made something stupid. Oh. Um, 
of the it was in the middle. Sorry, sorry, it was my mistake. Not running. We take the next one. Okay, I I cannot run this video, so we. Uh, now we have big difficulties, technical difficulties. We have to restart the PowerPoint. I'm extremely sorry now. In the meantime, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, do you yeah. have any experience of coiling the aneurysm which has ruptured? Have you well, ever advised coiling to patient who has ruptured aneurysm? In the middle cerebral artery, I know it should be clipped. Anatomy is totally different from other aneurysms. I will come back. I think even the technical advances in treating middle cerebral artery aneurysms, they should be treated by microsurgery. Of course, of course, I'm now working in China. So this is a place of endovascular surgeons. So maybe 70% mm. of the aneurysms have endovascular treatment here. Mm. And how about the uh, um, ACOM aneurysm, which has ruptured? Have you ever advised coiling to a rupture, not unruptured? During my time in Helsinki, nearly all aneurysms had microsurgery. After that, Right, so you will always advise surgery, microsurgery to a ruptured aneurysm, no matter where it is. Am I right? No, you are not right. You are not right. We are speaking now about middle cerebral artery aneurysms. Right, right. I digressed because for, your video was For my working. middle cerebral artery aneurysms, I would always say that they should be clipped. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Your video has started. Yeah, it's, I'm Thank sorry you. for So this is the same case. This is the sister of Guglielmi. I'm sorry to begin it again. It was my, my stupid mistake. My finger was on the wrong place. So. so again, we repeat focused opening of the Sylvian fissure here with under high magnifications with the needle and then injecting water inside the sylvian fissure and then opening here, careful dissecting. This is of course anatomy is here very clear because you have There is no blood disturbing the anatomy, and I was speaking that the aneurysm wall looks extremely thick. White is growing the aneurysm. It looks that there is also some hemosiderin. That's not ruptured, so we know very well there was no strong headaches. But we will soon see the teeth that has been growing and has very thin wall. So, studying the anatomy now, dissecting the aneurysm away from the brain, opening more widely the cilia and fissure. And then you, now you see the thin part that was growing. You have to find both M2s 
And now I put temporary clip, golden color, on the M1, taking care that the small perforators are not inside the temporary clip. And now I take a J-formed clip on the broad base of the anorison, take the temporary clip out carefully, because the handle may be attached to the small arteries or even or veins close to the handle. So you have to take very carefully the uh, temporary clip out. And now dissect it more, try to coagulate now the aneurysm. But the final solution is to put one more J-formed clip in tandem there and then add small clip to take the ear ducts. There is some small part of the base, so I add one more clip there. And this is the final, final solution here. And then this is Doppler, mini Doppler. It's very good and fast, and you can repeat it many times. And then we do it also ICG, and it's so good filling of M2s. Next case. Video edited by Johan Schoko. These videos are 1001 videos. You can find them in the internet around 1600 videos. Searching by Hernes Niemi and 1001. This is a coiled aneurysm, Italian patient at MC aneurysm coiled one year after coiling. Again, opening at Sylvia Fischer, injecting, expanding the Sylvia Fischer, and then opening the Sylvia Fischer. And this, uh, and also the difficulty was that the coils were partially in M2. So it looks now easy, just put the clip. But what happens here? So the clips inside the annals are pushing the clips clips down to the bifurcation and this occluded. So you don't have any flow, the bifurcation now. The clipping is too tight. So the bifurcation is totally closed. Now, now what we are doing, so we are traveling with the clips, try to go higher, but solution is to have to open the aneurysm and actually it looks uh, rather dangerous now if there is enough base left so i take a curved clip and second one and uh, this way i could reconstruct the bifurcation the coils which are cut and one year later they are attached to the aneurysm wall so it is uh, by far more difficult to remove them than after quickly after coiling and this is now the very important ICG and here post-operative DSA which was rather uncommon we didn't do DSAs after operation, just see the angio. So the patient did well and was flying home in a few days. Next case, I tried to select a huge selection of the videos, cases which Tian Tian, Chinese fellow, edited this. So here is a large MC Anderson, unruptured like a ball, short incision, incision, injection of the 
local anesthetic and adrenaline derivate and then this is the LSO craniotomy with one bull hole breaking the plate drilling away bone and then opening the dura very fast opening in this 10 minutes dura is already open counting from the skin in season and now we go to the to the aneurysm it was directed to the sylvia fissure so it will come first here ah, here i have a small bleeding from a vein pack it with patty and then inject water around the aneurysm is called water dissection <coughs> and now that kind of aneurysm you cannot clip without temporary clip first clip to go is here ring clip because the aneurysm can expand through the fenestration and clip is not slipping out and uh, this rather complex aneurysm i put the first clip rather early to compress the aneurysm together and it is not uh, in accurate position so the position is changed many times with uh, progressing dissection i take the temporary clip out now and change the clip positions, travel with two ring clips, and then I note I have to dissect more M, M2 away from the aneurysm wall, put again temporary clip, and then again ring clip, Anderson remains strong, still strong. So I add more clips to kill the Anderson Doppler. And now there are one, two, three, four clips. I'm still coagulating the Anderson that is filling, so I add long clip in the middle of the fundus a row of clips there checking m2s and now finally i didn't see the icg well but must must have been well and these are post operative pictures next day next case again edited by Chiang Chiang from China here's a ruptured large MC aneurysm I was speaking about the hematomas with operated large series of with big hematomas and have also bubbly that already in 90s the series this is again lateral superior approach the this is sukita frame has a extremely good retraction system and now the you see that the red angry swollen brain is coming i think it was dr drake my teacher who introduced this uh, these terms for the badly looking brain red angry swollen brain it is very good description here now the dissection is totally different here because you have swollen brain blood and uh, 
Now I have to find the MCA for temporary clip and it is behind and below the aneurysm. So now I put the curved temporary clip proximal to the aneurysm and now the aneurysm is more soft and I can dissect it but the angle for clipping is not good. The direction is not good. You saw that the, I was trying to put a clip with my left hand, which is not so, not so good as the right one. And then I'm, with the help of this clip, I go to the hematoma, take hematoma out, and then the brain is more slack. But now there's long fight to have proper clips on the base, large base of the aneurysm. And now Doppler checking M2. You have to have good flow, otherwise the patient has terrible infarction. And now dissecting around the aneurysm, changing the clip positions. The length of the clip should be 1.5 times of the base of the aneurysm. This one I learned from Dr. Drake, and I was thinking why it is so. It is simple geometry. So when you flatten the ball, then it is around half a p the length. So in six millimeter base, you have to have nine millimeter clip and so on. This is ICG. And now it looks that there's some honors left in the video. I was not so happy with, but in the angio, it looks good. And this is a giant left middle cerebral artery aneurysm. Young patient, 13 years old, had temporal epilepsy. And you see there are a lot of calcification. I was looking at this aneurysm and I was thinking at the base, there is no calcification, I could clip it. And this is the this is the patient two months after surgery. He was doing very fine. She was doing very fine and uh, is now a chemist in Lapland. So now we come to more difficult aneurysms. There's a thrombose giant aneurysm. Patient has also Anterior communicating aneurysm. The, it was decided to treat those both first, the giant aneurysm, and then to go for the anterior communicating aneurysm. But because of the complicated surgery, we left anterior communicating artery aneurysm alone and made it in two months when the patient had recovered. So this is one of the principles. If you have the difficulties with the first aneurysm, don't go to the second one. You should be able to stop. So now, temporary clips. Aneurysm is trapped. You cannot clip without temporary clips. This aneurysm and there is no coming back. You cannot regret here because when you go with knife inside the aneurysm, you have to treat the aneurysm. I'm seldom using CUSA, but to take the thrombus out is the best thing. And this is the DBK vascular clamp, aortic clamp, compressing the aneurysm. 
and we can take the temporary clips out and then we have time now to dissect now it is bleeding now it is bleeding so i take a ring clip and then again put temporary clips now the again another totally isolated M1, M2, have temporary clips, and then I take thrombus out. <coughs> In that kind of giant anorisms, the origins of M2 might be very hidden, and there might be thrombus, and so they might be occluded when you are clipping the aneurysm. So one part of the broad base was left. And you see ICG, both M2s are closed. Even there's a lot of space at the base. So we have to put temporary clips and check inside the aneurysm as some thrombus occluding the orifices of the M2s. So I'm went there, cleaned, and clip again. ring clips and then you should of course close the fenestration with the straight strong clip now changing the position here several times trying to understand how it is inside the base of the aneurysm so that the m2s remain open And now the straight clip is occluding the fenestrations. And now you take the temporary clips out, and now it looks better. And checking with Doppler. And now ICG M2s are open. And then Papa Brain around. M1 and M2, and then closing, and this is post operative next day. This is Perapong. Tiaraufat from Thailand. Here we have a distal MC aneurysm. And the trick here is that they are extremely difficult to find. So if you can navigate, use the navigator. Here we see rather complex looking distal aneurysm. The incision should be a little bit more posterior than regular Madras supraorbital approach. And we have to open more posterior here to come to the distal distal aneurysm so now you see what happened when opening here distally i hurt it the vein it's bleeding i inject water there still bleeding and then i have to sacrifice the vein then opening here, and now you see the difficulty. I don't find the aneurysm. And this is how it is. If you see a distal MC aneurysm, so take, be very careful in localizing it. So I open here, I sacrifice 
one vein here and I didn't find the aneurysm. So we have to search another place. So I didn't find that. So I made stupid mistake in localizing now. Based on that experience, we go different place and now we come to the aneurysm. That is even now it is not so easy to find. So if you can use the navigator, use it, now we find. Maybe third place I'm searching here in the archipelag of Sylvian, distal Sylvian fissure. So now we find the aneurysm. And it has two butches. I put one clip below. There's some venous bleeding. And then the other butch is here. I'm dissecting it. Put the clip there. Take a small ring forceps and draw the sac inside the clip. And for some reasons, I was not I was not happy because it is like a, a, Aneurysm is expanding in both directions, so I changed here the curved clip, and again it is sliding, sliding now. Now I have to do the trick again to take the small forceps and to draw the aneurysm inside the clip so it holds. If the clip is sliding, so it may, might be helpful to put the temporary clip here. So the aneurysm is more soft and now it is to size it and you see the postoperative CT angio here and the position of the clip, distal position and once more, they are difficult to find. And this again by Perafong edited. This is bilateral mirror aneurysms. So you see both side MC aneurysms, and you can do them by one sided approach, but you have to select the side well. Here we are going from the right side to have. Contrather approach is only possible if the aneurysm is direct inside the sylvian fissure. Well, so now we are going from the right side again, as shown in several videos. This is water dissection to expand, open the sylvian fissure, and then to find the bigger aneurysm is coming now slowly. So this is again focused opening of the sylvian fissure. We are going straight to the aneurysm. Here we can see M1 below the schizos, Kamiyama schizos, M1, and this M2. This is unruptured tunnels, so probably we can treat without temporary clips.
Dissecting carefully. And coagulating. Now I don't know what I'm doing here. It looks not very good surgery or yeah, there must be some thinking, some thinking. Okay, I was dissecting the fundus on both sides and now compressing the aneurysm with my forceps and then put the in the same direction I put the clip now this was a slow dissection and uh, looked tedious difficult put the pilot clip first clip And then the second one below the first one to take all the base. Here you have to be very careful that you don't take the, all the bifurcation, occlude the bifurcation. So this uh, balancing in the clipping of the MC aneurysms. So the bigger is the aneurysm the more you have to leave the space, like in the case where both M2s were occluded. So you have to leave a lot of space because the wall is thick and when compressed together, you might occlude the bifurcation totally. And now, <coughs> I'm playing with the clips. So I took, now I take the, this clip out. And now it is in the upper corner. I don't see well, but now I'm coagulating out the aneurysm. And again, took the clips out. Coagulate down the aneurysm. Was uh, uh, directed in two directions the aneurysm, and now I co have coagulated it down, very small one, and it should be able to clip with short clip. You see, there is a venous bleeding, disturbing situation. And now the small clip is taking all the base of the aneurysm. And then we have ICG angiography. And now we leave this place. This was the right MC aneurysm, rather complex, complex aneurysm, difficult to treat. And still changing the clips. Ah, this is final clip now. Okay, then we leave this. Now I have difficulties to understand now. Now I put temporary clip. This is many pucci's this aneurysm. Yeah, yeah. But I have two aneurysms. I'm sorry, now I'm confused. Okay, this is the bigger aneurysm now. 
I was a small anus, I was treating and now okay now this is bagulate it down and then the clip is going there. One more clip. Okay, now it should be ready. Checking, checking, checking. When you are at the place, you have to check carefully because this is the best possibility to. And this is wrong video. I have to take a look. Can we go to the beginning now? I was explaining wrong. I clipped first. I have to check this one. I, I, I will study this video better. I will explain next Friday because I'm late now. So this is a... <coughs> This is a patient coming from France, had a seven centimeter anosm. We did Elana bypass, and you see the black, bloody sausage is the thrombosed saphenous vein, which was used to bypass the aneurysm. I'm, I'm opening the aneurysm now. And you see a huge number of thrombus coming out. And then I put a temporary clip on proximally on M1, continue taking thrombus out with CUSA. And then cut the aneurysm, resected the aneurysm, and what I did in this case, this is the, again the, the PK clamp, because it helps to collect the base of the aneurysm and then makes like a road for the big clips and I'm compressing the aneurysm and then cut the aneurysm out and then put future base and then on the road that the DBK clamp has made, I put the big clips and suture them in place. 
also so that they cannot sleep. So this was the solution. And the patient was coming with two taxi drivers from France. She was talking all the time because she had temporal lobe compressor and that kind of mental disturbances. But after surgery, she recovered extremely well and lost her fear for flying and became more silent, not speaking all the time. So difficult surgery. We failed in the, sand, uh, in the bypass operation, but could correct with the resection of the aneurysm. So I finished with the videos. I'm very sorry for the technical difficulties and for the one the video I couldn't explain very well. So finally, I again come to the point, don't save the beautiful Chinese hair when you are doing neurosurgery. Chinese females have extremely beautiful hair. It is a pity that it looks here in China, in most places like that. You can save the hair. You see here this 10 years old girl after AVM operation, parietal AVM operation. She could go quickly to school after recovering from the surgery. And she was very happy for her hair. So middle cell proprietary aneurysm series are published seldom. They are common, but Every case is different. And because there are very few collaterals, so you have to take care of the flow very well. Vessel occlusions might be, might happen. And then you have large infarctions. And many times you have big hematomas, they may lead to permanent deficits. And I still think that best, the special aneurysms, middle cerebral artery aneurysms are best treated by a clip, by microsurgery. This is sub-selection of the series. You see that we have operated extremely uh, poor grade patients. And you see that the mortality in this case is high, but you can save also lives with good recoveries in also low grades, deeply unconscious cases when you treat them properly and in time. And there's a lot of discussion that to open the head is dangerous. It is our profession. We should not uh, be afraid of opening the head. If somebody is opening the head in a dangerous way, should stop to do neurosurgery. So, Finally, concluding, middle cell proprietary aneurysms are superficial and should have microsurgical treatment to have long time uh, good results in follow up. And what is important in operation room? This is from Henan Provincial People's Hospital, our operation room, good team to do the surgery. No one is doing alone the surgery. So thank you very much, JJ. Okay, you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's start off with uh, comments or questions from Vlad. Are you there, Vlad? Uh, perhaps he stepped away. Or Dr. Ben, would you want to start things off with a comment? Or? Yeah, very nice presentation. Because I'm uh, translating, so uh, they, co uh, they call me should uh, mute in this side. Otherwise, there's some echo. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, sorry yeah, about yeah, yeah. that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Luis, Lope, uh, Luis, como estas, Luis? Okay. Tiene comentario o preguntas? No, it's, it's difficult to my comment because uh, the only comment, see, I work, see, see, you have work in Madrid, I don't embolize never more. It's my comment. It's, it depends, it depends depend not of neurosurgery, it depends of neurosurgeon. <laughs> you understand? Okay. Congratulations, Yuha. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. 
other questions uh -huh. or comments? Hello, Manuel in Russia. Hello, John. How are you? Good. How are you doing? How are you? Oh, good. <laughs> How are things in uh, Moscow? The weather is Moscow weather, you know. Okay. It's cold, already cold. Okay. Um, I, I want something to say to Professor Juha. Uh, first, thank you for the, uh, for the speech. Uh, days ago, we have, a, we have a patient, and I have the opportunity to comment to him. was a big aneurysm in the, um, in the segment before of the vertebral artery. And uh, the approach on the, on the surgeries was uh, embolization. But the, um, the patient didn't have a uh, good outcome. And after that, uh, have a compression on the brain stain. And, and now the patient is um, brain dead. So I was commenting to professor, um, what was the, the, the best uh, approach for such big aneurysm and so complex in the uh, vertebral, basilar vertebral uh, segment? I, I will I will answer you privately, so because the other other guys don't know the case. It was the very huge aneurysm in the vertebral artery. So I will answer what this could have been my solution. So thank you for the. Okay, professor. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Very good. Nice to nice to see you, Manu. Okay. Other comments, questions from the panelists. Okay, very good. Uh, excuse me, can I have a question from yeah, Professor Yes, Harris? go ahead. You showed that all of your approach for the uh, MCA aneurysm was opening of Sylvian Fisher from the lateral. But my question is that if there be a um, um, uh, rupture of the aneurysm, you will not have proximal control and your field will be uh, full of the blood and you have not any proximal control. So you don't think the, the, about it that uh, we consider uh, opening of Sylvian feature from the proximal to consider carotid controlling or M1 controlling if the aneurysm be ruptured. This is my question. I, I know that you are sure from yourself, but you consider for every 10 aneurysm, every 100 aneurysm, maybe one of them be ruptured. So your field will be, would be full of the uh, blood. So you have not any proximal control. Now you were speaking about the complications I didn't have. You were fearing them. So I have been thinking and studying all the MCA aneurysms, and I'm always tailoring the approach. Even I open distally, so I go to the M1, and I have very good proximal control. I'm using temporary clip more often than not. If you look carefully at these videos, there was, in most cases, there was temporary clip in the place. I, as young neurosurgeon, I couldn't understand why are you going first down and then come back? So I began to open distally already 40, more than 40 years ago. And I can go to the M1. So it is not a, not a flood of blood or coming, coming soon. Of course, you, if you are doing improper surgery, you have flush of blood, but you have to go, your goal even opening distally is to go first to M1. And if you study anatomy, you can go carefully to M1, or to have control. So please read the paper, our papers, so you will find the answer, but uh, that kind of sudden rupture we didn't have, or I didn't have. This is the experience of more than 2,000 MCA neurosons. But in the beginning, I was already doing well because I studied the direction of the Very good. Uh, more comments? More Can comments? I have, uh, I have another question from Professor. Somebody present in the uh, paper that uh, we can going from the one side of the brain going to other side of the MCA in the other
other sides, the other brain for the sleeping, what's your opinion for a snail approach? You believe him or no? You don't advise us for this approach. I think uh, if you want to make contralateral approach, you have to be experienced neurosurgeon. I wouldn't advise to do that if you are not very experienced neurosurgeon. But when you are, have done many cases and you can understand the anatomy, then you can select the right cases and you can do it. My co-worker, Dr. Hugo Andrade Balazarte made his PhD on this contralateral approach. Uh, and uh, maybe we can take in future a presentation on that. But you can do it safely. Safely, you can do it. But you have to be able to select the right cases and be able to work in a deep, deep uh, gap. So, I don't recommend it, but the, those who are thinking of it, that they are skillful enough, they can do it. Another question, but, yes. Another question is, uh, what's your opinion for the anti-epileptic drugs? We must use uh, anti-epileptic drugs for the patients, all of the patients, you don't, or you don't believe for the anti-epileptic drugs for the patient? For, Middle cerebral artery aneurysm is good to for use. For all of the aneurysm, for all of the aneurysm. No, 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 listen to me. For middle cerebral artery aneurysm, you should use because they have many times hematoma. They have a manipulation of the cilia and fissure, but not for, for, for all aneurysms. Yes, uh, and another question is that uh, what's your opinion? I know that you, for the early patient, for the first three days, you will uh, operate the uh, patient in emergency condition. But if after uh, three days and patient uh, would uh, going into the vasospasm, what's your opinion? We must wait and watch to finish the vasospasm course, or you believe that we open the uh, patient and flip the uh, aneurysm and after that elevate the blood pressure for controlling of the vasospasm. What's your opinion for the vasospasm patient? We must wait and watch or no also, or, or no, we also can open, uh, opening and doing the surgery and after that elevating the blood pressure to about 18 uh, or more to uh, uh, better from the vasospasm. What's your opinion? So I have been beginning my surgeries during the time we were waiting. And if the patient was not in good condition, no surgery was done. But uh, if you then later will learn that those patients who are not deteriorating, if the patient is going downhill in, during one day because of vasospasm, you should not operate on. But if the patient's situation is stable and there is vasospasm, so we operate in, on higher blood pressure level. But if we operate after operation, we can elevate the blood pressure, but, but uh, with un ruptured aneurysm, we cannot uh, elevating the blood pressure for controlling of the vasospasm signs and symptoms. After but Vasospas is not preventing new rupture, so we should treat the aneurysm. And, okay, okay. Uh, we should treat the aneurysm, then we can go high with the blood pressure. Okay, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much, yeah. Professor. Okay, more, more questions, comments from the panel? Sir Bennett? Okay, you are. Thank you very much. Thank and, uh, you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry for the technical difficulties. That's okay. Well, let's, uh, well, uh, well, you can ask later, Altaf. Uh, you have, do you have a topic or a theme for next week, next Friday? Are you thinking about it? I think it? if uh, Subin agrees, we could spe speak on carotid aneurysms, proximal oh. carotid aneurysms. 